Welcome to The Woman's Connection. I'm Barry Louise Switzen, your moderator. The Woman's Connection is a program about events shaping women's lives and helping one gain authentic power on a personal or a professional level. So won't you stay tuned? Welcome. It gives me great pleasure to welcome back Carolyn Steiner. We're going to talk about health and finances and about her new book that she just wrote, which is phenomenal. And I would like to welcome Carolyn Steiner. Carolyn, uh, thank you so much so for coming back. So good to back. see you, Barry. Thank you. Done a lot of newsletters, mm -hmm. and now you've got this beautiful book, My Bible. Mm -hmm. All right. Why don't you tell us how and why you finally decided to write the book? Absolutely. The extended lifespan and are people prepared for it health-wise and financially? I have helped people for years on all kinds of issues, health and financial, and they've always said, you should write a book, you should write a book. And my Bible, M-Y-B-Y, B-L-E, is the result of all these years. This is the first uh, generation looking at an extended lifespan of going into our 90s and beyond. And it is not work, but effort to improve our health and our financial possibilities early on. What do you say is the most erroneous thing that people do that sabotages them with their health? Interesting question. Um, not eating whole foods. Uh, people say no fat, or if they go to low fat, or they fractionate. When you fractionate food, such as with no fat or low fat, your stomach cannot identify what you've put into it. Hence, it cannot digest it. The result is indigestion, gas, heartburn, rashes, weight gain, and many other, and even pain, can come from poor digestion. You have, people must stop, say, they must say no to no fat, to low fat, to fractionating foods. Whole food, and preferably where possible, organic, fresh foods, this is what is so critical to good health. And having fats in the stomach, because even people who are just vegetarian, there are many nutrients that are in the foods they eat that cannot be digested unless there are fats in the stomach. And additionally, people say, no salt, no salt. Well, salt is extremely important to your health. It balances the body. Mental fog could be a symptom of a salt deficiency. Celtic salt or sea salt. Celtic sea salt. What is the difference? Because I know I just picked up some sea salt from Scotland where I could go out to uh, the ocean here and create it myself. What is the difference between the different types of salt? The, the important thing is from whom do you buy it? Uh, who is the person or the, what, what is the company so that you know that you have a trusted source. Uh, so much of my Celtic sea salt is actually from France and it's dried on the beaches, but I understand how it's done and what, what is done because of my source, which is Selena Naturally. I searched for years and by the way, any source that I give in my Bible, I am not compensated by anybody. These are sources that took me years to find for products where people, anybody that buys them, you can call and you can get proper customer service and questions answered. So the different salts, uh, you want to be so careful because there are, there are things in some salts, such as too much fluoride in Himalayan salt, in the pink salts. So you have to be careful and have a good source that you purchase from. And Celtic sea salt would have your mineral-rich salt. You want all the minerals you can get in your salt so that you're taking in and enhancing your body and your digestion. Going back to digestion, 
one time I was very gassy, and you gave me a tip uh, with caraway seeds. Would you like to share that? Oh, absolutely, especially it's wonderful if someone is pregnant and they can take some, you know, either certainly not prescription drugs, but anything else. Caraway seeds are nature's natural calmative. Caraway, the same little seeds that we see in rye bread. And you just take a small teaspoon anytime you feel nauseous or you have an upset stomach. You have a small teaspoon of caraway seeds and you put them under, your, under the side of your gum or under your tongue and you let your saliva liquefy them. And, and you, you quickly pull juices from them. And the, as those juices hit your tummy, the, the soothing ability of caraway is, is immediate. It's immediate. And it's wonderful also, as I say, for a pregnant lady. You do. Do you eat the caraway oh, seeds? Yes. And then once you have the juice and the seeds are nice and soft, you just chomp away and chew them down. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They, they are. And they're also very good for your gums. Uh, caraway seeds nourish the gums, uh, does away with inflammation. So it's not only good for the tummy, but for the gums. Humming for vocal cords? <laughs> uh, I met one of the brilliant speech coaches many years ago, and she had heard a speech that I gave, and she said, you're going to have a very big career, and you'll probably be talking to audiences. And Humming to keep your vocal cords healthy. If you can hum 10 minutes a day, and I, over the years I've picked out five, six, seven songs that I enjoy that are in my wobbly key, and I hum when I do the dishes, I'll hum in the shower. Uh, you, you can hum when you're in your car, when you're on the toilet, <laughs> whatever, as long as you can accumulate 10 minutes of humming a day. So many people, uh, as they age, their vocal cords get a little shaky and a little whoppy. And you know, it, it's not necessary. It has nothing to do with, well, that's aging. There is no such thing. It is simply a symptom that your vocal cords need toning. And if you tone your vocal cords by humming, is one of the greatest kit tips I can give you for vocalization. <laughs> that is so great. I'll start humming. People usually tell me, stop singing. So now maybe I'll go for humming. <laughs> totally. <laughs> now, you, in inclement weather, people are always getting the sniffles. Mm. It's like you walk into a room and it's cold, so your nose starts going. Oh, yes. What would be a best way to fix that? Everybody has a little hair blower, and I use a little travel blower. It's this big, and it's 800 watt or 700 watts, very small, and you angle the flow of the air to come under your nostrils. Sit down. If My hair blower is in my bathroom. I sit down on my, you know, nice puffy padded uh, toilet seat. I have music on that I enjoy, and for five to eight minutes, I let the hot air go underneath my nostrils, and you close your eyes, focus on it, and inhale, and inhale, and get the hot air. That hot air is at a temperature that kills bacteria. It kills germs in your mucous membranes, in the nasal passages, and it's, this is a wonderful thing you can do because you could do it at your office if you suddenly have this little cold starting and you take your teeny travel dryer to your office and you could plug it in during the day just a few times a day and you can catch that cold or little cough right in the bud. Well, if you're in the theater... You can't really do no, that. No, you would do it before you get home. I mean, you can't do it if you're in a restaurant and it's suddenly you get a little tickle. 
But if, th if that's the case, then you want to be carrying the supplements that I mention in my Bible, because I do. I go nowhere without my briefcase with my little emergency supplements. And if I get a little tickle or, or somebody has suddenly been coughing their brains out behind me in the theater, I will make sure that I use my Nutribiotic grapefruit seed extract. It's a liquid and you put it in water and you stir it to disperse it and it's antibacterial, antimicrobial, antifungal and antiviral and, and if you catch some little cough or, or incipient sniffle, sniffle right away, it will stop it, as will the Congaplex from Standard Process and Immuplex from Standard Process. You recommend a lot of vitamins, vitamin supplements, minerals, etc. Is there a standard rule, like some of them you take before you eat, during the, eat, the time you're having your meal? Can you take them without a meal? What is the best procedure for that? What a superb question. Nobody ever asks that. And yes, you are right. There are times that you should take certain nutrient supplements. Digestives should be taken just before the start of a meal. That is when they will go where they belong. My Bible mentions what digestives I take and why I take them. This is very important. Uh, everybody is different. Everybody needs different nutrient supplements. So digestives are taken before. Uh, there are certain, certain supplement, nutrient supplements that need fats in order to be digested. That was why before I said people that they harm themselves terribly by not having good fats in their body. So you, there are certain B vitamins and vitamin K, uh, vitamin D, D3, of course. All of these need fats in the stomach in order to be properly digested. Uh, other, other vitamins, they, they can just be taken any time. It depends, and I do elaborate upon this in the book. It would be too much for our time here. However, um, I do talk about Standard Process, which is a whole food-based supplement. All their supplements are food-based. And their boxes always say can be taken on an empty stomach or, you know, take three times a day. Whereas things you might pick up in some grocery store will say take with a meal. Now you see, take with a meal, you will know that it is either a synthetic vitamin or it's fractionated, but it is not whole food based. And you also don't want that vitamin. Another topic that is really at the forefront, and people don't always like to talk about it, is sex. Mm -hmm. As you're getting older, your body changes. What tips do you recommend for good sex? Vaginal and penile lubrication are so critical, for, and not always as people age, but at many times of life, or even when there's great stress going on, uh, I've been asked this so many times, and vaginal and penile lubrication using Thunderidge emu oil or Omega Nutrition organic virgin coconut oil. And the important thing that we're talking about here is that a product is organic with no chemicals added, and both of these products are edible. So if in the course of relations something gets in your mouth, it is edible. Um, women go through with hot flashes later in life and um, then the vaginal dryness. And I'm always asked, you know, as people lower their voices, Carol, what can I take? I have this, I have that. And the fact is that inserting either the emu oil or this exact coconut oil into the vagina before sleeping at night. Over the weeks and months, it will nourish internal skin and it can rejuvenate that skin. And certainly for sexual relations, uh, this is an absolute find. Can any organic 
coconut oil and any organic emu oil, you can use this. No. Okay. I don't, I don't feel that way. I know that it is absolutely critical to know the source of your product, where they produce it, how they produce it. Can I call them with questions? Will I get help? And um, I have s researched the sources that I give uh, for years. And I do not believe that you can just pull any jar off any shelf of any drugstore or market and be sure of what you're getting. You brought some interesting chopsticks. <laughs> Would you tell us about them? Well, absolutely. Um, so many people, well, people love chopsticks. They love the Chinese food and chopsticks. Forgive me, I'm right-handed and I, I can't do what I, what I usually should do. But you can see that even with the cast on my hand and my fingers are not in, in perfect shape yet to be using anything, I can actually manipulate future sticks. They are called future sticks and they have these little teeth. And for the gentleman who founded them, and develop them. He is married to a Chinese lady, and her mom loved her chopsticks, and her mom developed severe arthritis. And he said to his wife, sweetheart, I am going to develop a chopstick that mom can get back to. And this is from a medical plastic, and also it prevents the cutting down of the millions and millions of trees. In China, 25 million trees a year are cut down for wooden chopsticks. Additionally, nowadays, we have to be so concerned with anything in these wood products because they're bleached, and they leach bleach into the food you eat. If you eat a lot of Chinese food or any food that you use these bleach chopsticks with, it's a big concern. Whereas future sticks from a medical plastic, they can, they can be cleaned in a dishwasher, a hot, hot dishwasher. They can even be cleaned in an autoclave. And they go in a little case, the ones that go to a restaurant with you, and they come apart and they go right into the little case and to put them together and they just go back together and there you have them. And the gentleman who founded Future Sticks, he also has great big ones for cooking at home. And he has little ones for children. And of course, children, what a gift for children. Is they just say, oh my goodness, I have my little chopsticks. <laughs> we also mentioned when we were talking about these chopsticks that they have a lot of bacteria in them. Yes. You can't get the bugs out of them? Well, there are some that come from various places and people have actually seen little bugs crawling out of the wood. As these things develop, it, it makes you more concerned and you decide, you know, why don't I just have a permanent chopstick that doesn't cause the cutting down of trees and I can wash them in a dishwasher. We all age and everybody's aging, getting better, not aging. Mm -hmm. As we move to the next stage of our life, our bodies change. Our memories change, our stamina changes, and we get these wonderful flapping wings. What are some of your tips? First, the memory. Okay. Um, uh, people are told, oh, well, memory loss, that's, you know, or a momentary lapse, that's part of aging. No, it is not part of aging. It is that we have the extended lifespan, and now we have to supplement it at, with whatever we need to do to keep it functioning at peak performance. So with memory loss, I have an exercise. What is and it? And it is called cross-crawl. Now, this is something that's actually been known forever, but cross-crawl will develop new neuron pathways to your brain, and you can do it sitting, you can do it standing, you can do it in bed. Cross, cross, you know when you go to walk, you put your right foot out and you put your right arm out, and then it's left and left. That's how we walk. Cross crawl 
is reversing that. You put out your left leg with your right arm and the opposite. So it's your opposite. And the opposite, and it's funny, people say to me, oh, that's easy. And then they go to do it. And it's not. It's not easy. And you can also, you could sit if somebody is, uh, has already has some um, uh, physical ha handicaps, you could sit and you can go like this and you go like this and you go like this. And then you can also go out and out and out. And you can get down on all fours. If I didn't have my, my splint on, you get down on all fours just like a baby and you put the one arm out forward and the other leg back and the other leg it is fully explained in my bible and you can do this on a mini rebounder a mini trampoline and um it is absolutely phenomenal and you can do it you get suddenly tired in your office midday somebody said to me i get a midday drag in my office I said, do cross crawl. You can do it sitting at your desk. And it rejuvenates you. And speed, this is also for somebody with physical disabilities, speed is not the essence of it. It's doing it slowly. It's the arc that's the essence, not the speed. And it's getting the arc. And it's doing this exercise just to being tired, a little bit weary, not to exhaustion. How many repetitions would you recommend doing? You would doing? say 10 minutes. Some people 10 minutes and they'd find maybe this first time is enough. And some people will go 20 minutes. It can be done on a whole body vibration board. But all these things are so important because the exercise that can help you reprogram your brain and it has also been found helpful for people developing Alzheimer's this is something that will help any of us to keep a clear brain and a clear memory now lo another thing to do for your aid for our aging brains is to lie either upside down or just inverted it doesn't have to be a standing on your head but getting blood flow to the brain, whether it's five minutes at five minute shots six times a day or lying inverted, lie on your floor in your bedroom. And if it's not carpeted, put, put some nice fluffy towels under you and put your legs up on your bed and let the blood flow come to your brain. Close your eyes, focus because visualization is also very healing. The brain is not just, the brain sees things. The brain can empower you. And if you close your eyes and you visualize the blood flow coming into your brain and, and you either put your feet up on a chair, you lie down on the ground, put your feet on a chair, put your feet on your bed, and it's very, very healing uh, mentally for getting blood flow to the brain. So the right supplements, cross crawl and inversion are extremely beneficial to memory. And what was you said? Oh, the underarm the flap. The yes. Nothing worse than waving goodbye to somebody and seeing yourself in a mirror and seeing jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. No, uh, there is one exercise, only one, and that will get rid of it. It will tone it to perfection. Okay, share it with us. Okay, again, I, I can't do it, but um, uh, you just want to find a chair or let's say a radiator that comes to just above the back of your knees, okay. just above the back. And you are going to put your hand down I'll, I'll show you with my good hand, your hand down with your fingers curved over that chair or radiator. I'm, I'm just thinking of things I use. Put your hand Carolyn. curved over the seat. And I can't do it with the other hand. And you are going to, you keep your arms behind you, not out like this, but your arms are behind you, everything positioned just be, be beneath your tushy. 
and you you re, you go up and down, not releasing from the top, releasing. You keep your lower arm still. The lower arm is still. So it's your upper arm, your upper muscle that's going, your upper muscle that's going up and down. You can see if I use my good hand, I pretend I'm holding on to something, and it's the upper, upper, and you go up and down with that, and it's everything for toning in here. And when I, I, I could do 200 a day, 200 at a shot, and I find that that's fabulous. But if you do 20 and you just build up to that and you get yourself accustomed to it, and once you've really mastered that, aside from just the, this skin that can get a little Weak. wiggly, <laughs> If you move your arm, you keep your hands positioned the same way, but you move your arm out like this, and again, you up and down, you will then get the front as well. So you can accomplish two areas of the arm. In our daily routines, which we all have visions of but don't always do, what would you say would be the most important thing somebody does daily? to maintain good health? Some form of physical exercise, some, some form. And I say some form because it, it, people, working people are, uh, and, and working people bringing up a family, you're so short of time. Time becomes, it, it evaporates. Uh, so what can I do uh, each day that might help me? Um, I think that the little mini trampoline is a great thing. One, because everyone enjoys it. And the husband, the wife, the children, whatever, wh whoever is in the family, or you just have it by ourselves in our home. It's three feet in diameter. It takes up no room. And the mini trampoline, as you jump, and you, you just jump a little bit, it, it revs up every single cell in your body. As you jump, no matter how little you jump from the trampoline, the cells are, are exercised as you leave gravity. You are leaving gravity. So from the top of your head to the tip of your toes, Every cell in your body is leaving gravity and is toning. You're toning. Now, for, if you don't want to, you could, because these things can be bought for as little as $29.99, but if you don't want to do that, then it's walking. Walking backward, which tones the abdomen. Walking forward, which t is good for everything. And if you walk, you should always throw your arm over your head as you walk. And you can also practice cross-crawl as you walk from before. The walking forward, walking backward, toning the abdomen, especially walking backward, and then walking up and down steps. Almost everybody has access to a staircase, whether in your apartment building or um, in a private home or in an office. But walking down, and people usually say, oh, well, that's easy. It's walking up. That's the big. No, no. the fact is, if you want to tone, then walking down steps is what tones. And you say, well, Carol, why? Why? Because what is the last thing a baby learns to do in walking without holding on to anything? Going down steps. That takes the greatest muscle control. So if you want to tone the legs, the greatest muscle control is slowly going down steps, and that's for toning. Going up is cardio. So. Okay. If you don't want to buy anything, we all have access to straightaways where we can walk forward and back, and we all ha can find a staircase to go up and down. But some form of physical exercise every day will benefit the brain, 
it will benefit all the organs of the body. And I think that those are just the simplest things. Carolyn, in the closing moments of the show, what would you like to leave the audience with? That the extended lifespan is placing burdens upon us, both financially and health-wise, that we never experienced before when uh, the lifespan was shorter. And as we look to living into our 90s and beyond that, it isn't work that we need to do. It is, um, it is effort that we must take to improve our health and take control of what we do, both financially and health-wise, in order to have happy years in our 90s and healthy years and keep ourselves going as we were meant to be and as we started out. Well, Carolyn, thank you so much for oh, joining me again. It's pleasure. been fabulous. Just a pleasure. I can't wait to do my cross call. <laughs> this is uh, maintain. Opposite, opposites. Oh, opposites. Opposites. <laughs> well, I'm not that quite spastic yet. I hope you've enjoyed the show as much as I have and look forward to hearing how you've taken some of these tips and used them yourselves. Look forward to hearing from you. Bye now.